Fecal incontinence or the involuntary loss of stool or gas is one of the many pelvic floor symptoms that can happen after a vaginal birth. And there are two main causes to this, a grade three or above perineal tear or a pudendal nerve injury. And both of those are at higher risk with a longer second stage during a vaginal birth. Now there's different ways to address both of these causes. Sometimes they happen together, sometimes they happen separately. So what we want to do is first make sure they are addressed medically, meaning the tearing is surgically repaired. A pudendal nerve injury is not going to necessarily be addressed medically um, unless for some reason there is more severe tearing of the nerve, uh, but that is very, very uncommon. So for a pudendal nerve injury, that is either a overstretching of the nerve or a compression of the nerve. And really the nerve just needs time to heal. And during both of those times, what we want to do is help improve space to the area, as well as give your body a way to reconnect to the muscles that are innervated by the pudendal nerve. Okay, so the first exercise we are going to do is a nerve flossing exercise. So you're gonna start on your back. You have a pillow underneath your head, if that is more comfortable. And then you're going to grab one of your legs and hold underneath the thigh. From there, you are going to point your ankle, straighten your knee, flex your ankle, bend your knee. We're gonna do this four more times. Three, two, one. Now we're gonna switch. Just keep your ankle flexed, and we're gonna straighten, point, and bend. Four, three, two. Lower that leg and switch. Okay, so we're pointing, straightening, flexing, bending. And if your range is not as big as mine, that is totally fine. You go through whatever range is comfortable for you. I don't want any ouchies um, with this nerve gliding. Okay, now we're gonna switch. So keep your ankle uh, bent, and then we're gonna straighten. Point and bend. Four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Okay. From here, we are going to um, bend your ankle onto the opposite knee and then hug your thigh into your chest. If this is hard on your arms, and it's taking a lot of work for your arms to do this, you can rest this foot up on a couch, a chair, an ottoman, um, so that your arms um, don't have to work as hard. So then instead of just hanging out like this, we're actually going to rock nice and slowly, side to side, about five times. And then pausing, lowering down and switching. This is just to warm up our muscles, get some blood flowing, create some space. Okay, fantastic back center, and then lower back down. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some muscle activation stuff. I want you to grab a pillow or a ball to put between your knees. This is gonna help us create more space into the back around your sacrum, okay? This gives the pudendal nerve more space um, while creating more stability for your pelvis. I'm going to add a chest press. If that is too much to have to coordinate um, between a bridge and a chest press, then just hold your arms up towards the ceiling. But if you want to add this and feel like you are coordinated enough to do it, then I encourage you to add a little chest press. This also helps with 
um, resuming some of that pre-pregnancy posture, which helps all around our healing of the pelvic floor. So <clears throat> we're going to inhale. As you exhale, we're going to think about closing to hold in gas. Okay, so we're really working those posterior fibers or the back fibers of the pelvic floor. At the same time, you're going to squeeze this ball just a smidge, just to allow your knees from flopping out. And then we're going to raise up. So inhale, feel your back body, exhale, hold in gas, raise up. Okay, now I don't need a massive bridge here. We're just going to go through a comfortable range, making sure that your glutes are firing without creating a pinching around your sacrum. If you are feeling that your glutes are actually pinching around your sacrum and they don't feel um, like they're just hinging through the hips, then I want you to not even raise as high up, really focusing on squeezing this, this um, ball or pillow so that you are getting out of those deep hip rotators, okay? <clears throat> then you're gonna add the chest press. And I am at this nice 45 degree angle, which gets into our muscles slightly differently than if we were at 90 degrees. So inhale, exhale. Okay, we're gonna do three more of these. So we're gonna start with one set of five. If you feel comfortable doing this and it is not too taxing, you can then do another set of five. Okay, I want you feeling like you are working, but I also want to make sure that we're getting into the right muscles. So it doesn't, shouldn't feel like you are really overworking. Um, and that you, you can do it again, only if you weren't really fatigued out. Okay. You should also notice I'm not tipping my pelvis back. I am staying in a neutral position here. That's one. Okay, awesome. So weights get lowered down. If you were using them, the ball gets placed off to the side. And then we're gonna flip onto our hands and knees. So we're gonna grab that ball again, put it between our knees again. And in this hands and knees position, we are going to do a rocking through our pelvis. Again, we're focusing on opening up, creating space for our, our pelvic floor muscles, but especially for that pudendal nerve. So we're going to inhale. As you exhale, you're going to lightly squeeze this ball, and then you're going to raise up onto your hands and feet. Well, I want you to also pay attention to your spine position. So if you, is your head dropped under or are you stacked over your shoulders? Are you arched through your spine and your ribs are flared or are you stacked over your pelvis? So pay attention to that because those little shifts can make a big difference in your stability and in through your movement during this exercise. So we're gonna inhale. Feel 360, exhale, squeeze the ball and press up. Then you're gonna drive one hip back and then rotate the other way and then lower back down. We're gonna do this two more times. Inhale, exhale, squeeze, lift, drive one hip back and then the other hip back and then lower back down. Fantastic. Okay. From here, we're going to go on to our belly. But before we lay down, I want you to put a band or a belt around your ankles. Okay. This is going to be for the next exercise, um, but we're staying on our bellies. So might as well do that first. If it is uncomfortable for you to lay on your belly because you are uh, still breastfeeding, 
You can put a pillow underneath your belly, um, or you can do this exercise um, on hands and knees, and then just skip the next exercise until it's more comfortable for you to lay flat on your belly. We're gonna have our arms out in front so that we can rest our forehead on our forearms. If you are using a belt, you are going to um, just put a, just enough resistance into the belt by separating your feet. If you're using a band, you're going to just separate your feet without putting resistance into the band yet. That is for the next one. Okay, I'm not gonna rest my head down just so that I can explain this. So what we are really working on here is what's called the anal wink, okay? We are on our bellies because we can actually get into the posterior fibers a little bit better in this position. Um, you want to make sure that your ankles aren't rocking towards each other. So your heels, um, we're not in first position. We want to be in a neutral hip position here because we don't want to compensate with deep hip rotators, which can actually pinch off our pudendal nerve, okay? So the anal wink is literally a quick closure of the anal sphincter. It's almost like if you were um, either passing gas or if you were pooping and you wanted to cut it off mid, okay? So ideally you do it beforehand, but that is kind of the visual. It's almost like the poop is coming out and you're cutting it off into little globules. Um, so inhale, nice big expansion into the pelvic floor. You should literally feel the sit bones moving away from each other. You should be feeling that the anal opening is kind of ballooning away from your head. And then as you exhale, you're going to do a quick closure. Okay. And then just make sure that you're relaxed. After this, I don't really care how you breathe as long as you're breathing. Okay. That was just the first one, just so that you can make sure that your pelvic floor isn't kind of a little bit held on. So from here, you're just going to 10 times in a row, do quick contractions of the anal sphincter. So it's close, off, close, off. So on, off, on, off, on, off. Really making sure that it is turning fully off, okay? You may not be able to go as fast as I am, but you want to work up to be able to do this 10 in a row in less than 10 seconds, okay? Um, if you can't do it in 10 seconds or less, uh, fully shutting off in between each time, then that's a goal for you. Okay, so next exercise is a superwoman. So you're gonna rest your forehead on your forearms again, and then we are going to think about lengthening our body in both directions as we raise our upper body and feet off of the floor. And at the same time, we're going to contract the posterior fibers of the pelvic floor. So it looks like this with the, if you're banded, with the outward movement of the legs. So we inhale, really expand through our back. Exhale, close the anal sphincter, and then reach in opposite direction as the legs separate, and then lower back down. We're going for five here, and then you're gonna take a, a break, and if you can do another set, go ahead, you're welcome to do another set. If five is where your body is at, Great. Okay. So if you're going to do another set, awesome. If not, great. Don't over fatigue yourself um, if you are already at that place. But if you can take some more, then that is where we're really going to be getting some of the strengthening into the muscles. But if you over fatigue yourself, then you're just going to get sore and not really get great benefit out of it. Okay. From here, we're going to press ourselves up. Take the band off. 
Then we're going to stand up to do a kickstand squat. Now I'm gonna grab a weight again, but if it is too much for the coordination of upper body and lower body, don't worry about the weights and just do the lower body. So my back leg is bent um, in my kickstand and most of my weight is in this front leg. My arm is going to add a little bit of a row after a twist towards my front leg. So I'm going to make sure that I am nice and stacked. My ribs are over my pelvis, my head is over my shoulders. And then I'm going to inhale as I lower and rotate down, which opens up this back part of the pelvis. And then as I exhale, I'm going to close my anal sphincter and then drive through my glutes and then my shoulder blade pulls back. Go at a slower pace. If this is new to you, you can add this arm motion without the weight. Again, we're doing five. And then we're gonna switch. Okay, if you can do another set, we're gonna do another set. If not, that is completely okay. Listen to your body. If five is max, then you can work up in the future, but don't overdo it. A lot of coordinating here. So sometimes that's too much. I really want you to focus on the closure of those posterior fibers on the up. And if you can't do that with all this other stuff, don't add in the upper body, okay? Don't add in this rotation. Just do down and up, down and up, okay? That is completely okay. I'm just adding a little bit of rotation to get some nice opening, which also helps us get into our glutes more, creates more space for the pudendal nerve. But if that is still too much and you start to feel it in your back, then back way off and just do the down and up, okay? Okay, so we're gonna end with a cool down of a mobility exercise that I call the Beyonce. So I'm gonna stand back up, <clears throat> place my hands on my pelvis, and <clears throat> if you want, you can use um, a counter or a chair if you want more, more support. And then what I'm gonna do is very similar to what we did on our hands and knees in terms of driving one hip back and very similar to the squat. So we're just driving one hip back as the opposite moves forward. And I want you just doing more of a relaxing breath with this versus coordinating that breath. And we're just opening up the back of the pelvis. So think about letting go of these muscles. You don't need to be clenching. Getting some nice twisting. Twisting is great for digestion, uh, which is great to make sure that we're not constipated and keeping kind of stool in there, um, which then can compound fecal incontinence. Okay, awesome. 
fantastic. So that routine was made specifically for targeting the posterior fibers of the pelvic floor, especially if you are experiencing fecal incontinent symptoms after birth. Don't forget to subscribe, ask your questions in the comments, and check out the other videos that look into other postpartum exercises so that you can really compile a good routine for yourself in this journey. I'm Dr. Ryan Bailey, a pelvic floor physical therapist and pregnancy and postpartum specialist. I am so grateful that you joined me today in learning more about how to support your postpartum recovery.